Hello, uh, this is Mr. Howard, and I'm going to be going through a little bit of practice from Module 2. Pardon me, that was my phone. Um, this is a practice test that we went over in class, but I figured going through step-by-step step, some of these things would help as well. So um, I'm going to be going through step-by-step step with the problems. We'll see how long it takes us, but here we go. Number one, given the expression 5n plus 4, identify the first six terms of the sequence. n equals 1 represents the first input. All right, what we're going to do here is we're going to do a little bit of substitution. Our first term in our sequence is when we put 1 in for n. So if we do this, okay, um, we're going to have something along the lines of 5 times 1 plus 4. Okay, 5 times 1 gives us 5, plus 4 is 9. So our first term in our sequence is going to be 9. I'm going to repeat this. So my second term in the sequence, instead of putting a 1 in here, I'm going to put it in a 2. 5 times 2 plus 4, doing a little bit of mental math here, that gives me 10 plus 4 is 14. All right, now, as you can imagine, we're going to keep going with this. Third term in the sequence, I'm going to substitute in a 3. 15 plus 4 is uh, 19. Now, hopefully, what you'll start to notice is that it's going up by 5 every time. Okay, so 24, 29... Um, 34, all right? Uh, this is also an identification of your slope, rate of change, all right? Um, so just keep that in mind as well. There's your first six terms. But again, the one for your n represents your first term. Two represents second term, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. Okay. Number two, draw a graph of a relation that is a function. Draw a graph of a relation that is not a function. Explain two ways we can determine whether or not a relation is a function. Okay, we have two ideas here. Here's one that is a function, all right? It needs to pass the vertical line test. So what I can have here is, I'll do a parabola for you. There's a parabola opening up, okay? Um, your number one go-to thing here is VLT, vertical line test, all right? Um, so I'm going to take, you can take your pen straight up and down. You'll notice it never hits more than one time. All right, it passes the vertical line test, hence it is a function, all right? Um, you've also seen examples like this, where I have like two, three, three, four, five, six. Here's like a set of points. You'll notice that because the x value does not repeat, it is definitely a function as well, all right? Um, so that's just one other way you can do it. So your one-to-one -one initiative right there. Okay, so we have 1 to 1 being, again, 2, 3, 5, so on. Now, an example of not a function is something that fails the vertical line test. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a little curve right here. Now, you'll notice if I draw a line straight down, it hits two points. Okay, um, therefore, again, it's not perfect straight down, but you get the idea. But like it, it, it fails your vertical line test, hence it's not a function. Okay, so it's a simple, easy way to do so. Um, just give you an example over here. Okay, so here's one example. If I had points like 2, comma, 3, negative 4, comma, oops, comma, 5, and say negative 4, comma, 5 again. Um, so let's do negative 4, comma, 6. You'll notice that these points are repeating. It's not a function. Okay, there's your two ways. Um, Explain the difference between domain and range. Identify the domain and range of the functions you drew in the problem above. So domain is input. Okay. Um, all x values. Range is output. All y values. All right. So if you're looking up here, um, interestingly enough, it's a parabola, your domain will always be negative infinity to, all, to positive infinity or all real numbers. Why? Because this is continuously going to the left, continuously going to the right. As far as your range goes, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit easier for us. I'm going to say that that bottom point hits on this point. I know it's kind of stretching a little bit, but that's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Your range would be from negative 3 up, okay? Because again, range is all your y values, um, domain is all your x values. Uh, differently over here, all right, um, domain, left to right, goes from negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6 to infinity, 
while your range for this one is going up forever, it's going down forever, that would be negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay? So domain, range, um, just to add another little thing over here, if you look at this example up top, of these points, domains your x values. Every point is an x comma y. So domain for these three points would be 2, 3, 5. That's a set of numbers. Your range is all of your y values, which is your second okay, value. 3, 4, 6. Okay, so there's another example right there. Um, what does it mean to be linear? We're going on to number 4 here. Write an equation below that represents a linear function and another equation that represents a nonlinear function. y equals mx plus b. Now this will be provided on your keystone exam. You can have it as a reference. Here's your slope. Here's your y-intercept. Okay. Um, so an example would be something like y equals 2 thirds x minus 3. Okay, uh, you've got a constant rate of change going here. Okay, um, all we're saying is y-intercept negative three, slopes two thirds. For a non-linear, so we'll call this linear, non-linear. All right, this would be something that is changing by not a constant fixed amount. So a parabola is a great example of this. Y equals two x squared plus two x plus one. This would give you a parabola. Okay, which would look something like this, which you can use on your calculator with your y equals mx plus b, or y equals button. Parabola going up. Um, you'll notice that it's not a straight line. I mean, linear has just got to be exactly what it sounds like. Straight line. Okay? Parabola is it's curved. Once it's curved, it's no longer linear. All right, number five. Uh, write the equation of a line that goes to the points below. Don't forget your good old-fashioned slope formula. Okay. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Okay. So they're giving you points here. Now it's your discretion. You can pick which one's X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Okay. As long as you're consistent, it'll work out. So here I'm going to say 3 minus 5 divided by 9 minus 3. Where am I getting this from? Again, right here in my table of values. I chose the first two because they're smaller numbers, easier to work with. Up top, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Sign's important. Down low, 9 minus 3 is 6. All right, we always, always, always want to reduce things now we can. Negative 2 over 6 gives us negative 1 third. Okay, so if we add this slope of a line, because it's negative, I'm not saying this is the exact graph, but I'm just saying it would be falling. Okay, a negative slope falls. Um, positive slope rises. Just something to think about. So that's our slope. Y equals mx plus b. Um, I'm going to pick one of these points over here. Again, these, this one looks the easiest, so I'm going to pick this. Put the 5 in for y. Right there on top. 5 equals my slope I found is negative 1 third. And my x is 3. That, that accompanies it. Okay, negative one-third times three gives you negative one. Use your calculator for reference if need be. Add the one over, b equals six. The two things you need for an equation of a line are you need slope and you need y-intercept. We've accomplished that right here. So y equals mx plus b. We're going to put in negative one-third for your m. We're going to put in six for our b. Boom, we got it. Okay. Um, this one jumps, kind of piggybacks right off the top, number five. If the value of stock is doubling every seven years, explain why this does not represent a linear relationship. Let me give you a for instance, okay? So if you run into a problem like this, just think about a real-life example. And year, when I'm starting out, so year zero, let's say my stock is worth 100 bucks, okay? Stock. Um, year seven, it's doubling. So it gets to... 200 bucks. So, I mean, think about this. What was the change? Plus $100. Year 14, seven years later, it's doubling again, so it's going up to 400 bucks. What's the change? Well, the change is now $200. Can you see how this is different? Um, the best example I can give is like, you know, let's say I was giving you a part time job, I was paying you like $5 an hour. If you work for me for five hours, five times five is 25 bucks, you're guaranteed that $5 every hour. 
this is not the same. You're changing differently, hence it's not a linear relationship. Okay? All right. Okay. Um, this one's kind of hard to see, like, on the camera, so just kind of bear with me here. The table below shows the typing speed X and the number of errors Y on a one-minute typing test for six kids. So we've got this data, and they made for us a scatter plot. Okay. Now it's saying, using the equation you found, I'm sorry, the points in the table above are plotted below. Draw a line of best fit and use a space above to find the equation line you drew. So all your work. Um, this is a little bit open to interpretation. Okay, if they're asking for your line of best fit, you are constructing a line that hits as many points as possible. Now, obviously, you're not going to get every one. Okay, so I have, I have a ruler here. Um, I have this one straight point. It's kind of an outliner. All right. Um, here's my interpretation. Okay, I'm going to hit as many points as possible. Okay. So now here's my equation, um, and it's at, or my line rather, I need to create an equation. So using the line that we drew, I'm going to find some points that hit the crosshairs. Here's one, um, and here's another really good one. Okay, now this is my line. Again, if you're doing this, it might be a little different. This point is, let's see here, um, the change is 6, goes up by 2 every time. So 40, 42, comma 8. So this point is 42, comma 8. This point is 56, comma 4. All right? You need to get a um, slope. Sorry, slope for your line. So we're going to go ahead and go back to m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right? And we're going to take a look at substituting in these points for our slope. So let's see here, 4 minus 8, okay, because we'll make this one our x1, y1, x2, y2, and then we have 56 minus 42. All right, negative 4 over 14, okay, and divide top and bottom by 2, uh, negative 2 sevenths. So my equation, or my formula, or sorry, my slope rather, is negative 2 sevenths. Um, as far as the equation of a line goes, let's see here. Um, we then have y equals mx plus b. Sorry, I'll move this up a little bit. Okay. Negative 2 sevenths. And I'm going to plug in these values. Now, one thing I can do, because I am generalizing this a little bit, it's a little above 12 and between 14. So I'm going to call my b 13. So I'm going to have y equals negative 2 sevenths x plus 13. Okay. Um, now, using this equation you found, predict the number of errors you would have. So I would take the 62 and substitute it for x. y equals negative 2 sevenths times 62 plus 13. Um, and I would just go ahead and use this value. Um, plug this stuff right in the calculator. I don't have one on me right now. They're at Keystone. So I'm going to go ahead and ballpark this. And just say, based off my graph, it's a little bit above two errors. So two point something errors. So I'm going to round it to two errors. There we go. Okay. Um, interpret the slope of your equation in the context of the problem. Slope is as I'm typing faster, I'm making less mistakes. So the slope is the rate of change of your speed compared to your errors. Okay. Um, so number of errors, how number of errors affects typing speed. Okay. Interpret the y-intercept. Um, this one's kind of weird. I will give you that. It's basically saying, as you go back this way, uh, that when you type no word for a minute, you make a lot of mistakes, which doesn't really fit. So in this one, the y-intercept has no context. No context. Okay. Um, and last, well, I'm going to stop right here. It's going to bring out time on my... Uh, Screencast, I will pick up in a moment with number eight. Um, thank you for paying attention so far. I hope this is helping, and you stay classy.